the opportunity I was born to discuss here in the city of Poughkeepsie. I am uh, Bill Garrity. I, I work at a company called Digital Painting Technologies. Just a, a brief overview of the company before I get into specifics on uh, the, the multi-space meters units themselves, how they work, and, and uh, how we anticipate using them here in the city. Uh, as a company, the company was uh, established in 1997. They're located just outside Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, we'd like to consider ourselves a, a leader in the multi-space parking industry, uh, excuse me, multi-space parking vertical, in uh, that we have pay stations deployed in over 300 uh, cities, towns, and villages throughout the U.S. Uh, we specialize in both on and off street deployments of these pay stations, and they're all backed up by a cloud-based management system, which I'll talk to you about the benefits of those. Uh, we are focused on the North American parking needs. These are meters that are manufactured in North America for the North American parking market. Um, we have many years of experience working with uh, local cities, universities, parks, and private operators to deploy these types of pay stations. Everything is, is you know, that I'm going to talk to you about in the next few slides is, is completely circled around an integrated parking management system. So all the different payment methodologies that you'll introduce that can be accepted at these meters, tying it into all the different aspects of your parking operation, the enforcement operation, um, what the customer experience is like, the, the, the types of ways that they can pay using uh, mobile devices and uh, license plate recognition technology. And there's a lot of interesting things that you can now do with your parking program by implementing a solution that uh, allows you to tie all the different facets together. This is just kind of a, these next two screenshots just give you a sense of what these meters look like on the street. They are centralized pay stations. You don't have the picket fence look from installing individualized traditional single space meters throughout your city. You're actually putting in centralized pay stations where the, the patrons of the uh, parking system will come they will pay for their transactions, and uh, then it's a, a focused, centralized point for your enforcement officers to report to, as well as all your collectors of your cash are dealing with centralized pay stations versus individual meters. And again, it's a longer streetscape of where you see the meters deployed down a block face. Okay, some of the advantages of working with our company is that, again, we are a leader in the multi-space parking <coughs> industry. Uh, we, have, we are a leader in license plate enabled parking, uh, which is one of the parking methodologies I'm gonna talk to you about in the next few slides. We have a proven install base across North America. Uh, our, our solutions are very easy for the consumers to use, the patrons of your parking system, and they're easy for the cities to maintain. Uh, we do provide an integrated parking management system, and I have a couple asterisks up, excuse me, asterisks up there. Um, this solution ties very easily into technology that the cities are already well invested in. The Compass State Enforcement Solution, our meters are the only ones that are currently communicating with your enforcement system in active installations, and while there's other companies that and potentially do it, you would become a test ground or a, a test pilot for that type of solution, whereas our meters in the city of White Plains, Ann Arbor, Manitou Springs, Colorado, Greenwich, Connecticut, there's an actual interface working there, even New Rochelle, New York, uh, so it ties in very nicely. Uh, our meters are the only ones, in fact, that are PCI compliant, end-to-end, -end, meaning at the hardware, software, and service level, and we have the credentials to back that up. And me personally, as, long, as well as my company, we have many years of experience in converting non-paid to paid but this is specifically speaking to the city of Poughkeepsie, where you have kind of an interesting dynamic here. You have your off-street parking is paid, but you have this potentially untapped resource of an asset at your disposal, which is your on-street parking base, which is currently free. And uh, being able to install a, a paid system on-street that complements the off-street parking, services the need of the, the parkers, the patrons who are coming down to your downtown core to use the businesses, as well as the merchants, it's all part of a uh, education process, a process that we'll go through and, and roll it out in an organized manner. Uh, we'll be working with a company that uh, has done this and successfully in other cities throughout the U.S. Flint, Michigan, Chief Knapp uh, had referenced uh, two other cities recently in Massachusetts where we took a non-paid system, Haverhill and Lawrence, Massachusetts, and, and successfully implemented a paid system using our parking meters, as well as in the city of Richmond, Virginia. Uh, Chief Knapp also spoke briefly about some of our local municipal clients, and this is just, a, I'm not going to sit and read all of these off, but uh, throughout the tri-state area, we have a very large install base throughout New Jersey, Connecticut, and obviously a very large uh, footprint in uh, lower New York State, uh, spread throughout Westchester County and uh, Orange County, a couple other locations. We would hope to uh, move that um, city of Poughkeepsie onto this client, perhaps one day as well. The operational laws, and we're going to get a little bit of education about the parking world and, and the types of uh, options you have to consider. When you put in centralized pay stations, you really can deploy your parking methodologies one of three ways. Pay and display, meaning the individual parks their car, they go to the pay station, they pay for their parking, and then they get a receipt that then they have to go back to their car and display that receipt on their dashboard. That's called pay and display. The next pet parking methodology is called pay by space. 
So this requires you now to mark individual space numbers throughout your parking program on street if you decide you want to go in this direction. Um, the challenge then becomes obviously is in the snow in the winter time. How do you, you know, if you mark the ground with that space number, we now need to get that space number off the street. Now what people who have traditionally used single space meters have done, like in the city of Milwaukee, what they did was when they installed our meters, they popped the old meter head off and just put a sign on the top of the old meter post. But you don't have those meter posts in place now. So it would become more of a challenge to implement a pay by space in a non-paid system to a paid system environment. Something that could potentially work uh, is what's called pay by license plate. Um, now, just like pay by space, the patron parks their car, they go to the pay station, they would either put in their space number, or in this case, their license plate number, they pay for their parking and then they leave at the meter. There's no need to return to the vehicle. So all the transaction is it, it, it seems that they park, they pay, they go on their way. Um, pay by license plate uses the credential of their, their license plate number. So they, they put in that information at the uh, meter, they leave. Now you can enforce pay by license plate by implementing license plate recognition technology in your patrol car, simply using the camera mounted on the car, just driving down the street, you can talk to the meter and say, this one car is paid, this car is paid, this car is not paid, and the office only stops and writes a citation. And again, just kind of just recap some of the, the things I talked about, the different parking methodologies, what's involved with each, um, each one, pay by pay display, pay by space, or pay by license plate. And again, this just kind of give you an education on the, the options that uh, exist here. The nice thing about our meters, though, um, again, one of the reasons why I think the city's it, it found a great interest in them is whatever hardware you, you, you buy from, it's the same pay station that's going to do pay and display, can also do pay by space, or can also do pay by license plate. So you might start out pay and display because it's very easy to deploy and it's very easy for the, the consumer and the, or, or, or the, the general public to pick up on. But decide years down the road, you want to switch over to pay by license plate. And you've already invested in the hardware that can do that. You don't have to come back and re, you know, re, reconfigure hardware, update software, changes, buy a completely different meter. You're investing in meters that allow you to do all three and move through the different parking methodologies throughout the, uh, the life of these particular units. The, the, the unit that we are proposing to uh, put in for the trial and then hopefully eventually in, uh, in a full deployment was, would be called the Loop 2 pay station. Um, again, it allows you to do any one of the parking methodologies I talked about. And I'm just going to run through some of the features here real quick. Um, payment options. The ability to set payments via coins, bills, credit cards, contactless payments, smart cards, a pay by phone option where people, consumers can actually set up a pay by phone account and use their mobile phone to pay for parking at the meter. Or you can also distribute or sell parking coupons to your merchants. So uh, if I own a restaurant in downtown Poughkeepsie and someone calls my restaurant to make a reservation, I can say, well, I'm going to pay for your parking since you're coming down and spending money in my establishment. So I'm going to buy pre-paid coupon vouchers for the meter. When you get to the meter bill, you're going to get to the meter, you're going to park, and you're going to put in this unique coupon code, which I'm going to reach you now over the phone, and that's going to pay for you an hour or two hours of parking, whatever the merchant happens to buy from the city ahead of time. And then that coupon code can never be used. And these are all different options now that you have to sell to get the merchants as stakeholders in this program and, and, and show them that the value of, uh, of, of being able to charge for parking at, at, at their block base, which does, they don't have now, but it's also going to be creating turnover. And we did some occupancy studies with this, with the, uh, the city and the engineering department and with the police department, and I think that uh, paid parking can work really well in Orange Street program based upon the occupancy we've seen in certain areas. Uh, the large color screen of our meters can be used to sell advertising to your local merchants. They can be used by the city to sell, um, to, to advertise special events, street fairs, things going on. That's uh, something unique to our meters as well. Our full alphanumeric keypad allows, they're very easy to use. It's easier for people to read. Uh, you can, again, if you ever go pay by license plate, you now have all the alphanumeric characters there for people to enter that information without having to rebuy re a new meter or rebuy new hardware. Separate access doors, maintenance cabinets, separate from cash collection cabinets. So whoever's doing the collections from these meters um, can be given a, a key that's unique to the bottom doors where the, the cash is actually stored. And the maintenance guy can only have access to the top of the meter to change paper rolls or change, you know, fix a battery or something like that. So there's, there's, there's auditing and security throughout the meters as well. You have an extend by phone option. So if I park my car uh, and I'm a, I'm a consumer and I'm in a meeting and it's running late, we can actually set up the meters to send text-based reminders to the parker. Your, your parking session is about to expire in 15 minutes. You can reply to this text message and actually extend your, your parking session at the meter without having to go back out to the street to do that. You can do that in either pay by space or pay by license plate if the consumer pays with a credit card. The meter will prompt them for their cell phone number. And again, they get a friendly text-based uh, reminder. That's 
one, the session's about to expire, and two, giving them the option to extend that session. Real-time services, uh, we just talked, spoke about extend by phone. Credit card processing is all done real-time through the meter. Uh, if you sell smart cards, so you can actually have people uh, pay in advance by a $100 card that can be used at the meter, so you're getting your money up front. They can then use that uh, card throughout the, you know, throughout the city parking at the different parking meters, and they can also reload and add more money onto those meters. It gives you another opportunity to brand the parking program here in the city by virtue of that card. Coupons we spoke about, unlimited types of reports you can get from these meters, uh, looking down at the transaction detail, monitoring and alarms, so the, the police department can be dispatched to a meter if someone's shaking you or trying to get your, you know, break into the meter, they can actually get an alert from the meter, it'll set off a car alarm, it'll also send a, an email to the dispatch desk that the meter 127 is being potentially broken into and dispatched a patrol car over there. And it, again, it, it, our meters are the only ones that uh, actively tie into your current enforcement system. Intro screen examples, again, we talked about the ability to create another revenue stream for the city selling advertising on the face of these meters by, by virtue of the full color LCD screen, something that uh, we will bring to bear. Customization options, the ability to run these off of solar power, AC power, a variety of communication options. You can custom uh, order the cabinets, actually custom paint colors, but obviously it does come with additional cost, but again, allows you to brand the parking program and tie it into different things going on within the city. Also sell advertising potentially on the back of the ticket rolls on the front side will give either a receipt in a pay by space or pay by license plate mode, or what they actually have to display in a pay and display mode, the back side of that receipt is your space to now, again, create another revenue stream by selling advertising to your local merchants or you know, other people, you know, bringing this receipt with $5 off your order, or something like that. PCI data security, again, I, I'm gonna harp on this a little bit only because it, 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 while it does, again, separate us from the competition, it is very important to you as the city, anytime you accept credit card data, especially at the parking meter, if that information ever gets compromised and you're working with a non-PCI compliant vendor, the city would actually be liable for any fraudulent transaction. But we're actually protecting you at the hardware, software, and service level by going through all these processes with Visa and MasterCard, assuring that the entire process is PCI compliant, payment card industry compliant, uh, will be, eliminate your liability uh, for any fraudulent transaction and also assures your, your parking customers that if they opt to pay with their credit card to the meter, that there's a high level of integrity and security going into that. Maintenance and local service, we're actually gonna work, uh, the, uh, well our company is based out of uh, British Columbia, Canada. I work out of Rockland County, New York with my home office. We're gonna bring another local partner into this, a company called Integrated Technical Systems. We have offices in Wickenham, New Jersey, as well as uh, Longford, Connecticut. They'll actually be the ones servicing the units, installing the units, maintaining the units, training engineering to whatever degree they wanna be trained, but also backing them up, them up if, if they get you know, trouble with the meter that they can't fix themselves. Uh, a technician from ITS will be dispatched on site within 24 hours to handle any issues, and they also stock a full complement of parts to uh, service the meters as needed. Uh, let me sum everything up here really quickly, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions specific to what we're gonna cover during our initial studies of the city. Uh, our, our company, Digital Payment Technologies, is a wide range of experience to assist you in achieving your parking goals and, and bringing in some, what sounds like some much needed revenue here for the city. Our, our, our Loop 2 pay station is easily identified as a parking meter. It's extremely easy to use based upon the feedback we've gotten from the consumers and we can obviously put you in contact with anyone of those other local references that I cited to you earlier. Our extend by phone feature is a nice way to show the consumers that you know, we're not here to write a ticket as soon as your meter expires, but we're here to give you options such as the ability to extend your parking transaction remotely via a mobile phone, EMS, which, which is our back-end cloud-based cloud -based management system is gonna allow you to get a variety of ports, excuse me, reports, and a wealth of information from the parking meter so you know what's going on, you know how much money these meters are, are generating every hour, every day, every week that you continue to run your on-street parking operation, and we're gonna provide excellent local service and support via ITS. So I'll open it up for questions. Mr. Chairman. Vice Chair. It occurs to me that someone can just park and not bother to uh, use the parking system. How will you know who's parking without doing anything? Terry, just uh, prior to Bill answering this, uh, we are leaning towards the pay and display system for a variety of reasons. One is the technology on the uh, third one, which was a license plate, would require an investment by the city, which obviously we don't want to overextend ourselves uh, at this stage, but as Bill said, 
we can revert back as time goes on to any of the other technologies as we, we create a revenue source, but we would look at the pay and display. So in this particular case, just like in the parking lots that the uh, people are used to now, they're doing a pay and display. So they get their ticket, they put it on their dash or hang it from their, uh, their mirror, and then that's where the ticket writers come in for the enforcement. That there's nothing displayed, then obviously they would be subject to a uh, ticket. Right. And my last question is, when would you, are you considering doing this pilot? It's really up to the, to the city to give us a final approval. Once the approval process is done, what we've identified is an area on Market Street between Main and the Arterial Road, mm -hmm. right near the county building. So there's a, an area where we could install three pay stations and have that serve as a pilot, a testing ground to see whether this technology Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is this the actual size? That's actually not the uh, the pay station we would install. Uh, I can distribute brochures on that. that that's another yeah. vendor. It's about. Uh, it's about as little, little shorter than so, that. So this is not what you're talking about. about. Did you give these to us? No. No. Sorry. Ms. Barry, that's another vendor. That's the vendor that we have now for our off-street parking. So this yeah. is the one that was on the desk. I assume that that's what you were talking right. about. You didn't have this. No, I, I apologize. I, I should distribute it as well. I'm glad you explained it because I was looking at this and I was looking at the weight Size of it's about five street. feet, five feet from the from the, uh, from the from the ground to the you know the top of the meter is about five feet. They are ADA compliant, uh, so all the bun buttons and functionality are, are at a level of forty eight inches or below. And, uh, this one was saying it was three hundred and ten pounds in weight, and I would imagine something like that would use a large section of the sidewalk. It's actually a rather a small footprint. Um, just to give you a sense, it, it sits on a concrete base. And if I had to estimate, the bottom of the meter is probably about that side, where the pedestal attaches to the concrete. About the size, of, about the width of that. Yeah, that's about it. That's the pedestal to the ground, and so then it does come. Up, it maybe comes a little six inches wider so than that, that at the top. About six inches or fourteen inches. Fourteen inches. Yeah, yeah sounds about right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Majority of board. Payment by um, pay by license plate. Yes. Um, what would the city have to install in order to use that? You can use the handhelds you have currently to enforce pay by license plate. It's just a little more difficult because what it does is it'll, it'll display an alphabetic list of all the license plates that are paid to the enforcement officer. Mm -hmm. But what they're going to have to do is when they come upon each car, scroll through that list. So you can get that information through the handhelds. The easier way to enforce pay by license plate is to invest in what the chief was referring to, license plate recognition technology, where you're actually not you know, some of the state patrol, uh, patrol cars have them. It's actually a camera that's mounted on the side of the car. So now all the, the patrol car needs to do is drive down the street, and it communicates in real time with the parking meter, and, and then it tells which it tells the individual in that patrol car who's paid for parking and who hasn't, so they only stop at the cars. That what about a pay-by-display? Would, pay that, display. would that be the same thing? Would you have, like, a radio or remote control for a pay-by-display? Pay-by-display, there's no necessary interface. Uh, required between the handhelds and the meters because it's a two-part transaction. The person has to go to the meter, they pay, and they have to return to their car to display. If they don't display their receipt, it might be a citation because they have, they failed to properly pay a paid receipt. Whether you dismiss that ticket on the back end through adjudication process is ultimately up to whoever's. But my question is, how do you enforce pay by display? Pay and display. I mean, do we have uh, are the uh, police officers going to be walking, or do they have yeah. a radio? It, it's Similar to what they're doing now. What they do is they go down the street, they see that they, uh, they mark the car either electronically or with chalk uh, using the complex units. And then what happens is when they return, if that vehicle comes up to them, you know, they, they scan in the vehicle's information. And if the vehicle comes in as overtime parking, then they, they get issued a ticket. Oh, so it's basically the same thing we're doing now. We're not going to do anything differently. 
if anything, they're going to allow the, they're going to be able to circle the blocks potentially more because the, the chalking process is, is a little more intrusive. Where this is, they're just looking at the dashboard to see if there's a receipt there. I see. That's it. Also, um, contactless payment. What do you mean by that? So there's the, some of the credit cards that are coming out now actually have these chips that are based within the credit cards themselves. Mm -hmm. So all they do, instead of actually sliding your card into the meter like you would at a gas pump, they just literally hold the card in front of the meter and it can read it by, by almost like it's like an RFID type of technology through the face of the meter. And that's really what it, kind of where the payment card industry is, sorry, the microphone, where the payment card industry is going. Um, you'll see think different things like that, chip and pin uh, type of payments or contactless payments where the, where the chip is enabled in the credit card, it removes the mag stripe puts it right in the car itself. How many of these cities that you already um, installed these parking meters are using pay by display or pay by license plate? Um, well, if we just I mean, go back to that list that I had up there earlier, I think some of the largest city deployments like White Plains and New Rochelle are very big on, uh, on, on pay by space because they have the infrastructure kind of to support oh, the signage. Pay by space, okay. Yeah, pay by space, pay by license plate. Um, top of my head, I don't know if any of these cities have rolled it out. Um, I'd have to go back and, and I don't want to give you misinformation, so I'd rather not answer out of, out of turn. But a lot of them do do pay and display, though, because it is a very easy deployment. Because it, it's the least amount of signage you need to roll out. Mm -hmm. It's the, 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 um, the integration to the handhelds isn't, isn't necessary, which cuts down on communication costs. And um, you don't have to mark up all your streets. Mm -hmm. It's individual spaces. So pay and display allows you that. It's a nice way to roll it out very honestly. And uh, knowing that you're investing though in meters that allow you to do pay by space or pay by license plate is a logical step. Instead of buying something that's pay and display, deciding that you know we got a grant, some grant money for LPR technology, license plate recognition technology, now we'd like to go pay by plate, but wait, if the meters we bought were pay and display, we now have to buy new meters. So I think it's a nice. Chief Knapp, do you feel that the um, way we're doing things right now for parking on Main Street where we just chalk the front tire um, is that really working for uh, to our advantage? No, because there's if there's a competition there uh, for the ticket writers. So the ticket writers, obviously, uh, there's three of them, and their day typically begins in court. So they're they're appearing for whatever uh, trials that they may have. From there, they got to go out and hit the various areas. One of the first areas they're going to hit is down by Metro North because you have a six-hour zone down there. They don't hit it near the beginning of their shift. By the time the eight hours come, that you can't go back and issue a summons because they're off duty. Right. So then they go and hit the two hour, the, the four hour zones, uh, the residential lots down by the hospital mm -hmm. is, is, is a hot area. Uh, up on Thompson Street is another hot area, but Main Street itself. So as a result, uh, we're probably only hitting one of those areas uh, once a day because you gotta first come and touch the car and mark it and then come back and observe the violation. The other thing that happens with people is all you have to do is break the chalk line to have a legal uh, uh, solution to your parking. So you mean by breaking the chalk line, you mean by moving the vehicle a foot, a or foot forward or a foot backwards? Or three inches. You know, once you move that car a little bit, then you move the car in, in the eyes of the court and as a result, we can't issue a ticket on that unless we had somebody physically observe that that car never left the spot. We mm -hmm. could not say that the guy drove away and came back. Mm -hmm. So as a result, a lot of people are on to that and will go out there. If you're somebody that's working or living in that area, you can very easily go out, move your car a little bit. You know, you see the ticket writers come through. They, mm -hmm. you know, they get their routines and, and then work around them. And, and this obviously takes away from that. You know, we, we dumped out some stats uh, from Complus just on what we give out on tickets on Market Street. And last year, in 2012, we gave out 1,100 tickets on Market Street. And this year, we're already at 614. Uh, no parking in the uh, restricted zone were the two high categories. This year alone, we had 173, in, in, uh, not the restricted zone, the uh, Parking overtime is 125 tickets alone. Uh, so they're the people that we're getting in there. But obviously, th this would now either you pay the meter or you pay the ticket. Because when we come through, it's going to make it a lot easier enforcement because we don't have to touch the cards twice. 
You just have to see what's displayed. Right. And if somebody wants to park, um, you know, if they work there and want to park or live there and want to park instead of going to one of the lots because it's more convenient to be on Main Street, they can, but they're going to pay, you, you know, for that privilege of being there all day long. And that's, that's what the complaint of the merchants is, is that they lose, they lose their parking out front for the customers that they want because the employees of other stores uh, or residents are parking in those prime spots. I just feel that pay by display is gonna have a problem because I think the majority of the people are gonna get their ticket and they're not gonna walk back to the car to put the, the, the ticket on the display. Yeah. I think they're just gonna take the ticket, put it in their pocket, and be on their merry way. It is an education process. Yeah, but I, I don't think it will be a problem because that's what we're using presently in the lots. And I, I mean, the city administrator have to answer the question because the lots are under him. But my understanding is, when I went through the uh, Academy Cannon lot, uh, just trying to look at occupancy, the meters, how people were using them, almost every vehicle there had, you, you know, the uh, ticket displayed. And, and myself, when I traveled up to Albany, experiencing the system personally, you know, I, I just took the extra 30 seconds to read the instructions, say, you know, what is this? What am I doing? Oh, I'll get a ticket and I put it on my dash and it, it, it's right there, it tells you, uh, right on the screen that that's what you have to do. Uh, and, and, you know, maybe that's something when we talk about the signage mm -hmm. on these machines. If there is going to be an education process, obviously, Corp Council or whoever is going to handle those tickets, if somebody comes in with a ticket and a display, obviously that's going to be a voided ticket at some point. Mm -hmm. but, but there's no perfect system, but right. it's the easiest one to deploy at this stage mm -hmm. using the technology we got and, and, and what we're facing uh, as far as the other methods, what that would encompass. Thank you. The, there are literally thousands of these in New York City, and they're all paid by display. I'm just curious about what I noticed one of your features that you have is fonts in multiple languages. Can you explain that? Yeah, we can program the meters to communicate in up to four languages, um, so that uh, when the, the user interface, and again, user, how, the, how the process of what those screens say, the order in which the information is displayed is customized by the city. We'll sit down, we'll have a kickoff meeting with the city, and we can tweak as we go along. So the first thing might be come up, you know, press here to for English speaking, Spanish speaking, or whatever other languages you may want to run across the meter, and then it'll walk them through the rest of the transactions in the language they're comfortable paying for the car. Now, and thank you very much. I think that's an excellent thing for our, our growing and diverse population. 